Welcome back to the learning series. We're going to continue on with pipe organs. Um, this is going to be basic pipe organ wiring 101. This is very simplified. Um, this is basically, we'll call this a four rank organ. There are four different sounds available on the manuals or the keys. And this is basically how it would be wired for one key. We're going to say that this is middle C. This is the organ key. And depending on what tabs you flip on the organ, we'll turn on these relay switches, these rank relay switches. These are multi-gang switches, which I'll show you in a clip uh, from the organ that's in the barn momentarily. Um, these are basically, these would be a 61 pole normally open relay. So when you click the switch on the console that says flute 8 foot, it closes this 61 note relay so that all the 61 keys C, D, E, F, all the way up through each go to their own organ magnet. <clears throat> so basically what would happen is when you press down the organ key it will connect this metal bumper will connect these two wires sending 12 volts to each one of these rank switches. If the switch is open the sound is turned off and no electric can go through and make that note make that organ magnet trip and make the note sound. But if the rank switch is closed because this tab is switched on, then the power will go through the diode, through the rank switch, and open this organ magnet. Diodes are basically one-way valves um, for electricity, meaning DC can go through it this way, but it can't come back. Now why why would you need diodes in there? Okay, basically why you would need a diode in there is let's say we've complicated this a little bit now. Now we have the C note as well as one octave higher C. Now if you have flute 8 turned on and trumpet turned on, when you play this key you're going to get flute 8 foot the C note and the trumpet 8 foot the C note. That's fine. Now let's say you turn on flute 16 as well. Now when you play this note you're gonna get flute 8 and trumpet 8. But now when you play this note, we'll say this is on the great manual, when you play this note on the great manual all you want is flute 16. So when you press this key, it'll go through the flute 16, which is an octave higher than middle C. So it's actually going to be flute 8 foot, because you're an octave higher, but you're playing a pitch that's an octave lower. So it ends up canceling and it makes it 8 foot. So this is going to play this same note. Now if there was no diode in here, and this switch was on, when you played this note on this manual, you're going to get flute 8, and it's going to go back through this if there was no diode, the power would go right straight through here and play the trumpet as well. Because this one would be closed, this one would be closed, this one would be closed. Same thing in reverse. If this note had Vox Humana turned on and Flute 16 turned on, and you played Flute 8 and there was no diodes, the power would go through here, play Flute 8, and also play Vox Humana, which you may not want on this note, on this particular key. So the reason you put the diodes in there is so no power can back feed. So that's basic wiring. It's very simplified. Um, just to kind of give you guys an idea of the complexity. Well, this is the old style switching unit. <clears throat> I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use an electronic system. But I wanted to kind of show you how this works. There's basically an air diaphragm that pulls these in. I can see how that moves. Now, the keys would be connected to these pieces of brass here, which are common to all these switches. And then each one of these switches, this happens to be a coupler. It's labeled Great 4. That's actually a coupler. But this would be a set of pipes connected to these wires here. And when you 
flipped the stop tab, it would turn on this and pull this in and connect that particular rank of pipes to the keys of the keyboard. I mentioned in an earlier video that um, I wasn't going to use the old mechanical rank switches. I've actually built uh, electronic switches, circuit boards, designed and built that go into a rack that I uh, acquired and I'm going to use those instead of the old mechanical because I feel that it'll be more reliable plus I can integrate MIDI. Well, I've got a couple of the parts here. This is basically a 32 note diode board that I, uh, I showed you the diodes in the diagram. Basically this is for 32 notes on one of the keyboards. There's 32 separate notes one note in 16 outputs. There's 16 diodes for each one because MIDI has 16 channels 0 through 15. So we got 16 channels that we can separately play or 16 different ranks of the organ. Now this is all color coded according to uh, the telephone standard and uh, this basically would slide into the rack and then the other end has not been terminated yet. They're just bare wires to be sorted out when I install the organ. And that's the back side of the circuit board. This board is basically a 16 channel MIDI splitter. Uh, the circuitry in the next board that I'm going to show you basically we'll let the MIDI go right straight through but the PIC has to process it. It doesn't just go directly straight through. So basically what I do is I bring the MIDI in to an opto isolator which drives these inverters which drive 16 opto isolator outputs. There's a 5 volt regulator and a small filter and stuff for the power supply and an LED to indicate that it's working. But it basically will take input MIDI and split it 16 ways and give the same exact signal out 16 times for the 16 different MIDI driver boards for the organ. And there's the back side of that circuit board. This is the creme de la creme. This is a 128 channel output MIDI driver. It has a PIC, which is basically a, a small computer microprocessor that's been programmed to operate 128 MIDI channels. You can select which channel, which note, which everything you want individually for every single output on the unit. And then these are basically, I think, a 7-bit counter. So basically how it works is when you want an output to happen, this sequences a number of pulses to these output drivers and then activates. This happens thousands of times a second. And when the certain outputs of these are activated, these are relay drivers, which can be activated or disactivated depending on how, when you put voltage to it. So this is also my switch. This is also my rank switch. So if the keyboard input signal is here, there's diodes to protect the MIDI output part. So basically if you press a note it would put a voltage on the input side of this which would drive the output organ magnet and it's associated LED if this bank of ICs is turned on. Now there's one processor and power supply for two sets of these. So this is actually a, a double board. The bottom is exactly the same except it's shorter because it doesn't have the processor on it. So that's the basic circuit board design for my 128 output MIDI decoder.